Hello students. I want to take you through the initial steps of creating step logic. One of the first things that I do in step logic is I create multiple program files. To do so, I just right click on program files, click new, type the name of the program file that I want to include and hit OK. Typically I use work bits, inputs, steps, and outputs. One of the first things that I start with is my input logic. I'm going to go ahead and activate that, that up here before we can take a look at it. I just page title it as input status checks and defining my input logic. So here we allow the programming of our logic to give us some additional control. So if the base cylinder is retracted and the base cylinder is not extended, and the output to extend it is not on plus a little bit of time tells us that the base cylinder actually is retracted. Same thing here, now we want to extend the base cylinder. So if the input is extended and it's not retracted and the output that tells it to extend plus a little bit of time, verify that time and the base cylinder actually would be extended. Okay, next I programmed some logic here to prove that the inspection cylinder is extended. So if I colon 29, which is the inspection cylinder is extended, the output to extend it is on, plus a little bit of time, tells us that the inspection cylinder must really be extended. One thing that we can do as a programmer is create some ghost logic. Now with the inspection cylinder, there's no way of knowing whether or not it is really retracted. So we can get around that. If we say the inspection cylinder is not extended and the output to extend it is not on, plus a little bit of time, then chances are the inspection cylinder actually is retracted. That's the best we're ever going to be able to do with that type of situation when we don't have an actual input to tell us that it's retracted. Okay, so I would just continue on adding my input logic here, writing the logic for every input on the station. Okay, and then I would start back with my work bits. And my work bits here, if we look at the actual file structure again, work bits would be right here. Okay, work bits just allows us to set up some initial conditions that we want to control, whether that be auto, manual, reset, or home position. So here we're looking at the control of the auto manual switch, I colon 2, 2. Here we got I colon 2, 2. One is the XIO and one is the XIC. So depending on which switch position it's in, I'm going to control auto or manual. Next thing that I want to create is called a home position. And remember the home position states that all cylinders are in a safe starting position. Here I've just shown a few. There would be more that would be needed here to create an actual home position. But the base cylinder retracted, inspection cylinder retracted, or the body present. Now notice these input positions here, B3 colon 00, and B3 colon 33 now make up my home position. If we go back to the inputs, here is my B3 colon 00, which is the logic that I program now. So whenever I want to know that that base cylinder is retracted, I actually use this input now. Okay, so back to that, base cylinder retracted, inspection cylinder retracted, and the body present. Okay, also we want to create a reset mode here, and if I have it in manual and I push the PB, I get a reset mode. One thing that we're going to need in our program is called a one-shot bit. A one-shot is true for one program scan only. So if this instruction is true and this instruction is true, the one-shot rising bit becomes true for one scan only. This will typically happen so fast that you'll never see it come true in your program. And last thing that we must put in our work bits here 
is some JSR. So we want to jump to subroutine U3, U4, and U5 because this is the last line of code in this rung. So we jump to U3 and what that means is we're going to jump over here to ladder 3. We're going to scan all of our inputs here. Okay, and then it's going to return back to the main program and then jump to U4, which would be our steps, comes back, jumps to U5, and then goes to the outputs, and that completes one program scan. So after we've programmed our inputs and our work bits, next thing is to program our steps. And our step logic is really nothing more than a series of events that we want to control. Okay, one thing that's important is, is to be numerically correct. I typically always start off with a step zero. And notice I've used an N7 colon zero bit here. You could use B3 colon zero zero, but the key is to have the zero match the step. Okay, so one of the first things is you wanna start your cycle. So if you're in reset mode, you're in manual mode, the one shot becomes true and you're in home position, you're gonna get step zero to occur. So step zero occurs, comes down here, occurs down here. As long as you're still in home position, that will put your station in cycle. Now notice when it's in cycle, this, true, this bit here becomes false. So step zero can't happen again. And that's a very important thing because we don't want our sequence of operations to begin again until we tell it to. So remember, we're, in, we're stationed in cycle. So now we want our manual mode, step zero, to occur. Station is in cycle. And as long as step two hasn't occurred, step one will begin. So really, these first two steps are kind of like some precursor steps to get things started. And this is our very first step of our program. So step one basically says, I want the station in manual mode. I want step zero to have happened. I want it in cycle. And as long as step two hasn't occurred, I will allow step one to activate. When step one activates, it also creates a seal in and maintains that step one on. Okay, so we told step one to happen. So in step two, we must look for step one to have occurred. Okay, so if step one happens up here, we look for it to occur in our next step, step two. Okay, here we still have a start PB which in other words, in order to get step two to ever occur, the start PV is gonna have to be pressed as well. But as long as step one happens, we press the button, the station's still in cycle, which it should be, and the base cylinder extended. This is another key right here. In step one, we told it to extend the base cylinder. So in step two, before that can happen, it has to have become extended. And then again, step three will break this, and then step two will actually extend the inspection cylinder. So the whole key to step logic is, is we tell something to happen. Step one, we told something to happen. Step one must have happened, and then we look to see that it actually occurred. So again, manual mode, step zero, we're in cycle. Step one is extend the base cylinder. This would become true. And when this becomes true and the base cylinder actually become extended, then step two would occur. So all you would do is continue to model your logic after the steps above, creating a step for every position or every movement that you want to monitor and occur. After you've written your steps, then you go to your output logic, and your output logic simply just controls your steps. So here, we've got reset mode, we've got step one. We had step one occur in our logic, 
and that tells the output to actually come on. Now notice this one is branched, so if it's in step one or step two, it will tell the output to actually come on. So the extend base cylinder in this particular situation would keep the cylinder extended during steps one and two. Okay, and then here, step two says I want to extend the inspection cylinder to check for proper part orientation. If we wanted something else to hold that down, we would just put a latch around here. So we just continue on with our steps. Whatever our steps are, control our particular outputs. Okay, so for review, typically start off by creating multiple ladders that we can work in, knowing that work bits is typically where we set up our initial conditions, auto mode, manual mode, home position, reset mode. Here we've got our start PB one shot, and we include our JSR subroutines. Inputs, that's just typically where we define our logic. It allows us to have more control over the actual real world inputs. With the base cylinder extended, I colon 211, the base cylinder is not retracted and the actual output is on, plus some time would extend the base cylinder. And again, remember the ghost logic here for the inspection cylinder. We did not have a way of knowing whether or not it was retracted, so we created our own logic to say that it was. So if the inspection cylinder is not extended, the output to extend it is not on, plus a little bit of time, then our inspection cylinder must be retracted. Okay, then we would write our step logic. Okay, our step logic typically starts off with some precursor conditions, such as step zero, which starts our cycle puts it in cycle, and when it's in cycle, then we would want step one to occur. Remember, step one, we told it to do something, so in the next step, we must make sure that step one occurs, and what we told to do earlier, we must verify that it actually gets done, and then step two would occur. And then last is just our outputs. We tell our outputs to come on, according to whatever step is truly and active at that time. Okay, so I hope that this has helped you. This is a good intro to step logic programming. And the key here is to just write your code in small steps and try a little bit before you continue on. And we'll talk to you later.